Mike Santoli, I'll start with you. Would you have expected this day to end the way it did? Uh, I wouldn't say I would have expected quite this magnitude of a rebound. Obviously, the last half hour, we got that boost in that Wall Street Journal article where this Fed's you know, messaging is getting more dovish. But I do think all along the way, you saw NASDAQ outperforming all day. You saw some of the most beaten up areas like Goldman Sachs, like housing stocks, actually outperforming even in the morning. So it's not that big a surprise that we made another trip down to these recent lows and then found no buyers. It bent but didn't break. But the market remains a mess, right? I mean, we were up 6% in six days from a seven-month low, and we lost it all in a day and a half into midday today. So could that be the kind of thing that says, ah, this is a very important reversal, and we refuse to go below those levels, and we just had a whisper of good news? Yes. But I think it remains a very agitated and stressed environment. So that's why um, you, you never sound an all clear. It's not just this time you can't sound an all clear. You literally can't do it, right? Seth? No, you can't. No. <laughs> uh, Unless you'd at, like to. But at the same time, it's like we keep on selling off on the same data. That's right. right. Like, OK, we know that trade, there are some question marks with trade. But at least they made some progress. OPEC, we're going to know tomorrow. So we don't have to stress too much. Fed, we know that they're getting a little bit more dovish. But we, we, we have to listen and hear what they and, and see what they do next week or in two weeks. So I kind of feel like we keep selling off. And then we find, kind of like stabilize. I'm actually trying to find the positives, because like, that's what I always try to do. But I mean, like lower oil, lower inflation, lower interest rates. That's good for the consumer, which is 70% of the US economy. That's good. And actually, the data has been good. The economic data, ADP yeah. today, um, initial claims were OK. Services I bet, ISM again. All the, all the yeah, PMIs and that sort of thing. So I just don't, I, I know we're going to slow. I agree we're going to slow, but we're not going to go into a recession, and it's certainly not happening in the near term. There's another person that shares that view, Stephanie, and that was Leon Cooperman earlier on the halftime report. And we should actually point out that was partly behind the market rally, which the low came just before uh, that interview. He was very clear, saying there's no sign of a, a trend change on the market, and he thinks the market will end the year higher. David, uh, where are you in this debate? Do you think uh, this optimism, people are missing things when they, when they have views like that? Well, let's remember the market is, what, flat on the year, give or take. I don't have the exact numbers at the close. So the market hasn't done much this year. It's, it's, so the market's earning its dividend yield. Uh, so it's not a disaster by any means, even though it feels that way. And I think Rick has said that many times on these, these programs where it looks like we're going to zero, but we're actually still up or flat on the year. So I think the economy is slowing a little bit. Uh, you know, my big concern from a rhetorical point of view is that in 2008, the story was, don't worry, home prices never go down. And now we're hearing it's all right because we have a strong economy. Don't worry about the stock market. So I, I think we have to resolve where the economy is heading, what the Fed is doing, what trade's doing, and that's creating a lot of volatility. But in the meantime, the market hasn't done much this year, so it's actually, it's actually pretty good. Mike, if there's one overriding factor, we can change it from trade to interest rates to oil day to day. Morgan and I were, were talking about this earlier as it relates to the banks, but I think it relates to all stocks, and that is simply that the market looks further ahead than the economic data does. Always, and, and, yeah. and, and the market participants might be wrong, but essentially there's a fear out there that the market always looks one or two years ahead and that we could have a, a pullback at, in front of us. So even sure. if this quarter's data is good, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I mean, I would argue maybe it's looking six months ahead and trying to see what things look like right there. And I think all year the market has been very sensitive to any suggestion that the end of this cycle is nearer than we, we would be comfortable with, right? Um, that being said, I mean, the, the magnitude of the strong economic data in the moment right now in terms of those, those ISM indexes at 60 and, and all the rest of it um, would suggest that there would be a while before the, the market kind of stalls out before you would act, or the economy stalls out before it became a big problem. So uh, I agree with you. Well, I, I do think it feels a lot like the 2015 into 2016 sell-off. It was this kind of complex, multi-stage correction, a lot of stuff going on. Oil was crashing, credit was in question, emerging markets melting down. But ultimately, the U.S. had a growth scare but did not go into negative growth. Not 94, 95 anymore. Well, so it's, it's, I, can, I, have an, I have one of these historical analogies for any purpose. I'm learning so much, Mike, Mike, as I always do. Now, let's talk about the trade deficit. It increased uh, in October to 55.5 uh, billion dollars. It's highest level since October 2008. It's the fifth straight month uh, the trade gap has increased. IMF Managing Director Christine Lagarde sat down with Sarah Eisen earlier today to discuss how she sees trade tensions impacting the market. 
there is that concern about trade and the trade um, tensions and rhetorics and threats and tariffs, those that have been applied and those that are being threatened, and the uncertainty as to how this is going to be resolved, which is weighing, I think, on the, on the optimism of markets. Uh, trade clearly a, a factor, and, and does this alter the, the negotiation stance, this data? I mean, it, it, it's the bigger picture trend, and we're well aware of that, that matters in, in the U.S.-China dispute. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, I don't, I don't know that, um, you know, I don't know that gaming the growth rates of the economy in different parts of the world uh, necessarily matter for the trade thing. I mean, I really do think it's kind of like people are dug into their positions on either side and they're trying to maximize their leverage within it. Yeah, I think, I mean, I don't think she really said anything that we don't already know, yeah. right? I mean, it was kind of stating the obvious, but um, obviously the, the, the global markets have been slowing for a while now and before even trade. So, you know, this obviously has put a lot more pressure globally and, and we're going to have to see how it all pans out. I mean, I think that China is actually in, in a lot more trouble in terms of their economy and their markets. And so that's why I do think that they will come to some sort of a, an agreement on the trade front. I think they have to. Do you think that possibility is even priced into the market looking to 2019? That they will that there get a will deal? be an actual deal, a, a more, no, a, no, more specific don't. agreement. No, I, I, I don't. I mean, look at the way the market traded on Monday. I yeah. mean, we're up huge, um, and I think there's still a lot of question marks on the details. So that's why I think we gave a lot of it back. And I also think, you know, the part of the yield curve inverting also put some sour grapes on the market overall. But I think if we get something in uh, within 90 days, even if it's something, I think the market will rally.